Good morning everyone, my name is Rick and welcome back to my channel. Me and Swiffer here will give you a tour of the yard today and then I picked out some Hoyas. Uh, there are some veiny ones, some really cool ones and some new ones that I have. I'll show you those later on but uh, today again I'm going to show you some of the coal damage, uh, how it's progressing. I mean from that I think near freeze back in uh, uh, Christmas Eve, uh, things are beginning to look, uh, showing full um, damage from that. Uh, and then we had another cold spell that lasted a couple of days and it dropped down into like 36, 37. So yeah, my yard is not looking too good, but the good thing is that um, the temperatures are going up, uh, the days are getting longer and I see very few signs of spring here um, and I'll show you those as well so let's get to it uh, here uh, the my uh, heliconias did not like the cold they are uh, burnt to a crisp the good thing about those is that they have the rhizomes and they should bounce back um, you know and when the weather gets warm and I don't re know if I, I did mention um, when I had my house tented, the fumes uh, did also burn some of the plants here. And I was surprised that the one that suffered the most was this ponytail palm. As you can see, it's lost all its leaves. But I see little um, signs of coming back on it. So, uh, and you can see here, this had a nice canopy on this branch, but um, it, fro it, it all fell off and now I have like, uh, I think four or five new growth points there. So yeah, I'm kind of glad that uh, we're heading into the last week of uh, January and February here in Florida, you start to see quite a few signs of spring uh, in the outside gardens. You start to see some blooms in Hoyas towards the end of February. The days obviously are, are longer. The temperatures start to creep up slightly. Uh, and a lot of stuff starts to happen uh, past the mid point in February. So that is only a few weeks away, only like three weeks away. So I'm kind of really looking forward to it. Um, as, as you can see, these plants are looking kind of shabby. I'm hoping some of them will recover, but I do plan to uh, rotate a lot of these plants out into the greenhouse so they can have um, a better chance of making it and bringing out new ones um, when the weather gets a little warmer. So that'll be after um, uh, mid-February and I, if I don't see any cold fronts coming through for the rest of February, I'll start bringing a lot of plants out of the greenhouse and putting them out here. So let's see what's exciting uh, that I spotted. Uh, my croton I thought it had made it through the cold spell, but uh, it doesn't look very happy. It might bounce back, but that's the way it looks now. It doesn't look too good. But my Hoya Kadata has been out here for a few weeks now, and it uh, actually bloomed. Uh, it didn't, uh, it survived the cold spell. It was in the greenhouse. And I brought it out here uh, for the second cold spell when it dropped down into the a high 30s and it didn't bother it whatsoever it actually um, put out a peduncle and it bloomed but uh, these blooms are a little bit old so uh, it was really pretty I'll put a picture when I edit this video up but I love this Hoya Kadata Sumatra it gets like these bronze colored leaves they're really um, really kind of hard and they get splashy and they have a nice undulating edge to them so that's pretty cool. And the um, monkey tail cactus, it stayed out here the whole time when it even dropped down into like 33 degrees. And it seems to be uh, non affected by it whatsoever. Um, and another Hoya that likes a little bit of a cool weather is Hoya australis alba marginata. As you can see, it's putting out quite a bit of new growth. Uh, even here, uh, the temperature's been climbing up into the 70s uh, during the day. And at night, we've been getting like 55, 60. And once in a while, like I said, it drops down into the mid 40s 
or that really bad um, cold spell that we got uh, when the temperature dropped down into like 32, 33. So I have these two over here. This is a Hoya Pachacuata Alba Marginata. It's really pretty. I love the leaves. It's pretty thick. It's really easy to grow if you grow it a little bit on the dry side. And uh, this is the Hoya Pachacuata Intervarigated. It's a little uh, more difficult to grow, I find, uh, for me here. I've had this plant for a couple years and it only put out maybe two sets of leaves. I'm thinking it needs to be changed into fresh potting mix. So when the weather warms up just a little more, I'm going to rinse those roots and I'm going to repot it uh, and check the roots and see if it needs cutting uh, and just give it new uh, growing media on that. It's a little harder to find than this guy. I, I always see this guy for sale. But this guy is uh, a little bit harder to see. Let's see what else we got out here. Uh, another sign of spring here is my Hoya uh, Sulawesiana. I brought it out here about two weeks ago. And it has, I think, five peduncles. And it looks like uh, that one is actively putting out flower buds. And this one... Not so much, but this one is coming along. And these buds should be open in about three to four days. So what else we got here? Um, yeah, there's a lot of damage like this. Nathalie didn't like the cold at all, so it's completely dead. This um, uh, doi tongue didn't bother uh, with the cold at all. It did pretty well. Not a leaf damage whatsoever. I, I need to repot this because it's all entangled with this other dead Hoya here. Um, that's the project I've been working for a year and all these little setbacks and I take trips and keep putting it back into the to-do list. But hopefully this spring, uh, this Hoya, uh, this is Hoya latifolia from Sarawak. It stayed out here the whole time throughout the cold, and it looks like it's gonna lose most of its leaves there. And the ones that were attached to the tree look a little better, but I don't think that they're, they're gonna make it. Yeah, they're probably, the plant's completely dead. Yeah, this uh, Chinese lantern survived it was out here the whole time and some of these philodendrons and that's a taka a bat plant so uh yeah some of the stuff did pretty well and some of the stuff didn't as you can see let me just take a quick look on the other side of the garden show you a few things and then i'll get to the hoyas that um that i have for you hey swiffer so yeah, a lot of this stuff, a lot of coal damage. Uh, Hoya penderata was out here the whole time and it's actually putting out new growth. And the one that surprised me the most is this Hoya uh, amrita. She was here the whole time and uh, I forgot to bring it into the greenhouse and she seems to be doing pretty well. And that peduncle actually looks like it's ready to put out a flower. I did bring some of these aeroids back out. This is a yopi that stayed in the greenhouse. Uh, so yeah, slowly I'm bringing the plants out as the temperatures stay favorable. And this is an alocasia reticulata that I got from my friend, Lily, and it's doing rather well. It was also in the greenhouse. And this Hoya odorata stayed outside throughout the cold and it didn't uh, bother it at all. It's actually putting out new growths. So it's a really nice Hoya, Hoya Adorada. Um, my Monstera Thai Constellation, it seems like it uh, did. I had a blanket over it. Uh, so I don't think this is so much cold damage, but some physical damage from being covered for three or four days. And over here, like I think I showed in my previous videos, 
the non nooch uh, did not survive this cold, but the one next to it, this huge Hoya Erythrina Nara, uh, did really well. So uh, even some of the bromeliads, like this guy here, it was the only bromeliad I lost for some reason. It probably doesn't like the cold. So yeah, stuff is beginning to, you know, look a little better than it did following the cold spell. And my Hoya Rattusa is doing pretty well. It didn't go in the greenhouse at all. It actually stayed in bloom when it was um, really cold. So this Hoya doesn't mind uh, when it gets a little bit colder. So let me get to the Hoyas that I have selected for you. But some of them are pretty cool, so you don't want to miss those. And the first Hoya I have for you is this Hoya Discipule. And as you can see, these little flowers look like egg beaters. That's how I hear people describing them. To me, they look like little crowns. They're super cool looking. The... Um, Flowers seem to last a long time. I, these have been in bloom for over a week, so I don't know how longer they'll stay like that. And it looks like it's putting out another peduncle. Since I've had it uh, about two months, it's put out like this new set of leaves. I have it in um, chunky coconut chips and um, also chunky perlite, number three perlite. And it sits in a little, I have a tray uh, and there's a little bit of water down there to keep it moist because these thin leaf Hoyas do not like to dry out. So Hoya the Sipioe, if you don't have this uh, unusual Hoya, uh, it's definitely worth growing. Uh, the flowers are really stunning. And this Hoya here goes by a few names I've seen over the years. Hoya's species Bayak, uh, Hoya Bayakensis and uh, Hoya uh, Colina. I have not seen booms on this one. I think it's a little bit difficult, but uh, for lack of, of, of flowers, the leaves really do um, put on a show. They're really, really splashy, as you can see there. And this one seems to be pretty happy in the greenhouse, uh, putting out a lot of new growth, so um, maybe this summer, I'll have some blooms on this Hoya Bayakensis. It's so cute. The leaves are about the size of a quarter. And I have it growing in a mix of uh, vermilion mix, which is a, like a chunky soil mix that you can buy at um, Home Depot or Lowe's here in St. Petersburg. Uh, and lots of perlite, number three perlite. And this is one of my favorite foliage Hoyas. I got this from Sarisa, I think about six months ago. Uh, this is Hoya rigidifolia. And if you look at the leaves, the, these older leaves, they're like the name implies, they're pretty rigid. They have that mid rib and those two ribs on the side, very attractive and very, very uh, distinguishable Hoya from other Hoyas. Um, just by looking at the foliage. Uh, and it decided to put out this rather unusual uh, splashy leaf that is quite more attractive than the other foliage that I've had on this on this plant. As you can see, it's darker, splashier, and the veining is deeper. And hopefully that newer leaf um, will be like this as well. And this is a newer leaf as well. It's a little smaller, but also pretty splashy. So the blooms aren't really exciting on this Hoya, but it does uh, make a really beautiful um, foliage plant. And here's the peduncle. And the next Hoya I have for you is a cool growing Hoya that grows up in above 2000 feet in the mountains of Thailand of uh, Doi Entenon. So as you can see, the flowers on this are pretty cool. I haven't been able to bloom it, and I doubt that I ever will. I'm here in Florida, and I don't have the altitude or the cooler temperatures, 
but I will try to grow this out um, as much as I can. Maybe uh, I'll put it in a cooler spot here in the garden where it gets a lot of airflow and I'll put it up on the tree uh, so it gets a lot of um, a lot of breezes. So yeah, it's, it has really pretty uh, leaves and you can see that new growth there is doing pretty well. Um, and the flowers are pretty exquisite. If you Google them, they're uh, really beautiful. So this is Hoya Thailandica. Cool grower, high altitude Hoya, and you're probably saying, why is Rick growing high altitude Hoyas that like cooler weather in Florida? I like a little challenge. So um, I probably, again, won't be able to flower this but I just had to have this Hoya it has pretty, pretty leaves. They're pretty, um, pretty chunky. Um, and I actually saw the flowers when I was visiting a friend up in Adoy Antanan, Thailand. So and this is the new growth on this Hoya is quite beautiful. It's tiny little, very um, maroon colored leaf. It's very attractive and it does make a very attractive uh, foliage plant. So Hopefully I can at least grow it uh, into a nice size plant so I can share it with people that live in uh, higher altitudes, colder climates here in the U.S. And up next is this Hoya uh, Nap 6. It is a really pretty Hoya. It's a newer acquisition. As you can see, it's quite veiny. Uh, I love the way this one sun stresses, like the uh, outer edges are, are a lot darker than the middle, makes the veining really stick out. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about growing this guy out. The leaves are pretty medium size. I've never seen huge leaves on this Hoya yet, but I think that's how it grows. And I don't even know what the flowers look like, but these, these leaves are really, really, really gorgeous. I can't wait to have a huge plant of this guy. The next Hoya I have for you is this really special Hoya Guten Garden Borneo uh, that I got from my friend Jack in Thailand. He actually has a YouTube channel and I'll put the link below. Uh, it's in sub, it has, he's put its subtitles in his latest video. So that's great for those who don't speak Thai. Um, but you can see this Guten Garden Borneo is more than 85% splash. And he achieved this in his nursery by uh, taking cuttings and selecting the more splashy um, uh, nodes and rooting them until he got to where uh, these uh, were almost completely splashy. And I'll show you the newer leaf. As you can see, this leaf is new, probably started sprouting out about um, about two weeks ago I saw that it was putting out a new leaf but as you can see the leaf the new baby leaf you can uh, barely see but it's coming out with a lot of splash as well which I'm really excited because it's I, I have it in the greenhouse and it's so packed in there and uh, it's not getting a lot of light so the fact that it's getting out putting out a nice splashy leaf really uh, reassures me that this Hoya will continue to put out really gorgeous leaves like that. And the next Hoya I have for you is this Hoya uh, that I got from Sarisa way back about eight months ago. It's, uh, she had it labeled Hoya species from Indonesia. I believe uh, I've seen pictures of flowers and it may be a Hoya verticillata. I'm not sure, uh, but these leaves are quite distinct. They are deeply uh, scalloped and veiny, um, somewhat uh, rigid. Uh, these two are the original leaves and it hasn't put out new leaves. It's been in the greenhouse for, like I said, all these months, but it's put out this really nice, this nice little long vine. And hopefully when the weather gets a little warmer, it'll start putting out a bunch of new leaves. So. Uh, really excited to grow this Hoya out into a very large plant. And before I get to my last Hoyas, I want to show you two beautiful orchids that I picked up at Artstone Nursery. 
that's a local nursery here in St. Pete and they have a lot of orchids and sometimes you find like some rare, really rare stuff and I was really excited when I walked in the door and I saw this guy I just had to have it. Uh, this is a Hoya epidendrum. I'll show you the tag here. Uh, Epidendrum uh, raniferum. It's a species epidendrum and I think they call these reed epidendrums because as you can see there are pretty they have some bulbs there at the base but they're pretty long canes. As you can see they're about two feet long these canes and at the end of the cane they put out the flower um, points. And I was told that not after they bloom, do not remove them because they will rebloom them on the same um, spike there. So I'll show you uh, the flower again. I love it so much. The lip is exquisite. Uh, the scent is out of this world. It's one of the best uh, uh, orchid scents I've ever smelled. And they're green and yellow and they have like maroon spots what's not to like it's really gorgeous i'm so happy and i hope to keep this guy alive and it's a long uh lasting bloom because um mike at uh, uh at the orchid at the um, art stone told me that they had been this has been in bloom for a while um and um and i've had it for like almost three weeks and it's still in bloom so it's quite gorgeous. The next one is this antelope uh, dandrobium. It's mounted on like a, a basket. As you can see, it has like these orange and browns. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous flower. And this one is a cross of dandrobium tangerinum, tangerinum crossed with dandrobium discolor. And see these blooms up close for you. So those are really quite nice and they're really enjoying the weather here. I think they don't mind the cooler weather, the dandrobiums, I know that for sure. And I'm not sure about the epi um, epidendrums. I think they like, they don't mind the cooler weather as well. So the Hoyas I have for you, the two last ones, are these two uh, monetes, Hoya monete. Not to be confused with a hybrid, the uh, Aristema hybrid uh, called Monet. And that's a totally different Hoya. This one is a species and it's known for it's really large. Uh, as you can see, these get bigger than that. Uh, this is a couple of nodes that I took from a friend's plant and I just transplanted, uh, just planted this about three weeks ago. It looks like it's rooted, but these leaves are quite massive. Uh, and the flowers, I'll see if I can uh, find a picture and put it uh, when I edit the video. And uh, then I was sent this beauty uh, from A.H. Hoyas. I'll put their link below in the description as well. Uh, this is Hoya Monete Splash, and it is quite splashy. It's put out a new set of leaves since I've had it, and it does have splash. So it seems like it's gonna be consistently splashy, I hope, and uh, the leaves will probably get uh, bigger. So this is, Hoya Monete, the splashier version and the older version uh, with bigger leaves so far that I've had for years. So yeah, that's gonna be it for today. I really hope that you enjoy this video. Um, I, again, I apologize for missing last week, but I was, uh, it was really cold. Uh, I think it was Sunday morning last week was like down in the 40s. So that was a little too cold for me to come out here and video. Um, and I also had a little bit of a, a small uh, kidney stone and those can be really painful. Uh, I did drink a lot of juice and some lemon water and after a few days the pain went away. So I think I uh, passed the kidney stone without even noticing. It might have been just so small. Uh, like I said, the pain wasn't so bad. So January hasn't been a great year uh, to deal with all these dead plants. And then I had the kidney stone and I was uh, just trying to do a, a lot of work. And I did a sale yesterday in Valrico at Bella Plaza. So I had to get ready for that. And that's always fun. 
Um, but yeah, it's been a really kind of stressful January for me and I'm really looking forward to warmer temperatures and um, yeah, the yard, these plants, some of them bouncing back. But one more plant before I leave, it's this uh, Verisae uh, simplex. It's a bromeliad family plant and it puts out these really long bracket flowers and I'm surprised it's putting them out this early in the season. So this is the plant. I've had it over here for like three or four years. And these really long um, pendular uh, bromeliad, uh, these flowers will open up maybe in a month or two. And they last like four or five months. It's quite, a, puts quite a show. And as the plant gets, uh, gets older, it keeps putting out more of these beautiful um, inflorescent spikes there, as you can see. And that is all. I hope you guys have a great week ahead and hopefully come back next Sunday when I upload a new video. Bye-bye. Take care.